let's take a look at rigid body mechanics. So, so far, our approach to physics has been limited in two major ways. One, we've discussed phenomena largely that are linear or translational, meaning they've been along a line. So when we talked about motion and force and momentum, it was often in a single direction. We have also primarily focused on point objects or objects which don't rotate. Now we've gone beyond this a little bit. We've talked about circular motion, centripetal force, centripetal acceleration, angular velocity, and things like that. But we're going to expand upon that. Now we're going to think a lot about rotating objects, and these objects are going to be rigid, meaning they don't flex, hence rigid body mechanics. But these rotating objects, when we consider them, we're going to consider them from what's called an inertial reference frame, so an outside reference frame, not from the perspective of within the rotating object. We're going to imagine we're outside of the rotating object watching the rotating object. So for example, consider a wheel that is rotating about a central axis like this. We can define a few important quantities, for example, the radius. And if we have a point on this wheel that rotates from A to B, then we can also define this angle here, call it delta theta. And that is the angle that the wheel rotates through. The distance that this point on the edge would travel would be r times delta theta. That comes from geometry, that's the arc length equation. Now notice, when we think about the units here, delta theta we're going to measure in radians, and r we're going to measure in meters. The distance traveled should come out in meters. So if we think about the units, we end up with the idea that a meter is equal to a meter times a radian. It turns out, that when radians are multiplied by a distance unit, the radian disappears. The radian is a different kind of unit, and we're not going to delve too deeply into that, but just be aware of it. Now, we're also going to think about angular speed or angular velocity, omega, which we've seen in the past. And technically, angular speed and angular velocity are different, but we're going to use them interchangeably in this course. And the angular speed is equal to the angle that's traveled through divided by the time that it takes. In other words, it's the rate of change in theta. The unit of the angular velocity is radians per second, and with a little bit of math we could show that the speed of a point on a rotating object is equal to the angular speed times the radius out to that point. Now there's no rule that the angular speed has to be constant, we could have an increasing angular speed or a decreasing angular speed. And so we can talk about an angular acceleration. Sometimes this is called a rotational acceleration. And the angular acceleration is the rate of change in the angular speed. So we can come up with this equation. The angular acceleration is equal to the change in the angular speed divided by the time that it takes. It's the rate of change in the angular speed. The unit of angular acceleration would be radians per second squared. And we can come up with a relationship between the acceleration and the angular acceleration, like so. Now, all of this can also be related through rates and derivatives. And I'm quickly going to write this down. I'll do it for linear motion over here. So remember, velocity is the rate of change in the displacement. We could write that as a derivative like so. And acceleration is the rate of change in the velocity. So we could write it like so, or even as a second derivative like this. For rotational motion, the angular speed is equal to the rate of change in the angle, or as a derivative it would look like this. And the angular acceleration we can write as the rate of change in the angular velocity or angular speed. And so it can be written this way, or even as a second derivative of the angle. So for example, imagine we have some kind of wheel like this, and it's spinning faster and faster and faster. Well, that means that the angular speed is increasing, and there has to be an angular acceleration, right? There's a rate of change in the angular speed. Now, if we're going to apply equations for angular speed and angular velocity, then we have to choose a direction to be positive or negative. Now, often, counterclockwise is chosen to be positive and clockwise is chosen to be negative. And in fact, there is a sign convention for this, but 
we're not going to go there because it involves three-dimensional vectors and a right-hand rule and so on. But just notice you have to choose a direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, to be positive, and often we'll choose counterclockwise to be positive. So there are a lot of parallels between rotational motion and linear motion. And in fact, when we used linear motion, we made a lot of use of things called the kinematic equations. I'll write them down here. Turns out that for every kinematic equation, there is an analogous rotational motion equation. So all we do is we replace all the velocities with angular velocities and the accelerations with angular accelerations and the displacement with angular displacement. So let's try them out. Let's do an example. Let's say we turn on a ceiling fan, and the ceiling fan begins to spin clockwise from our perspective. And it starts from rest, and it takes 5 seconds for the outer edge to reach a speed of 1.5 meters per second. And the fan blade has a radius of 0.6 meters. And we want to know what's the angular acceleration of the fan blade. Well, let's see. We were told that the initial angular speed is zero. We can figure out the final angular speed because in the end, the outer edge of the fan blade moves at 1.5 meters per second and it has a radius of 0.6. So the final angular speed is 1.5 meters per second divided by 0.6 meters, which is 2.5 radians per second. And then we can use this rotational version of a kinematic equation to solve for the angular acceleration. And I will use the sign convention that counterclockwise is positive, and here we're rotating clockwise, so I'm going to have some negative signs in here. I get negative 2.5 radians per second is equal to 0 radians per second, plus the angular acceleration times 5 seconds, and if I solve for the angular acceleration, it's equal to negative 0.5 radians per second squared. And that negative sign is telling me that the angular acceleration is in the clockwise direction.